What's up gaming heroes and welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. In today's video we're going to be talking about the 10 most exciting changes about Dragonflight. Unfortunately I wasn't one of the lucky YouTubers who managed to get access of an alpha key. However, that's not going to dissuade me from making awesome World of Warcraft content around Dragonflight. I really hope that with recently being added to the World of Warcraft website and being known as a favorite content creator for World of Warcraft, that Blizzard might change their mind and offer me an alpha key. But nevertheless, I'm going to continue to make wonderful content for you guys. Thank you as always to my wonderful patrons who continue to support the channel and support me in making awesome World of Warcraft guides. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Become a dragon rider. That's right, in Dragonflight, we have access to dragon riding. This is such a cool new feature that I am so excited about. There are currently four dragons that you can access the Proto Dragon, the Tero Dragon, the Wyvern, and the Drake. Master the art of dragon riding. Dragon riding is a new form of aerial movement. So you can explore the land and believe me, the land's designed to be explored with dragon riding in mind. These mounts aren't just normal mounts like you would have currently in World of Warcraft. These mounts are fully customizable so you can actually change the way that these mounts look. They aren't just a typical model that you're there's your mount and that's all you got. You can change how these mounts look. That's so cool. And no two drakes are the same. It's also worth noting that dragon riding is different to how normal flying mounts work in World of Warcraft. You have new unique abilities which help you fly throughout the skies. It's important that you master the ability and the skill to ride your dragon. You have to do this because you can get knocked out the skies if you're not careful enough. As you grow in skills, you will get special skills that will help with riding your dragon. You have to fight against the exhaustion of the pull of gravity to the ground. And of course, take advantage of going down and then flying back up using that momentum. You can improve your dragon riding skill by hunting down unique glyphs and advancing your dragon riding skill. Once you reach maximum level, you'll unlock more customization and therefore dragon riding will feel that much better to you. Overall, I'm ecstatic about the idea of dragon riding and I wish I had an alpha code so I could give it a go myself. I love just watching people at the moment do dragon riding. It sounds so silly, but the idea of just needing to get from point A to B on the map. And it's no longer just a fly in a straight path. It's a fly up, down, swing around just to get momentum, just so I can get there that much quicker. By the looks of it, you are a lot faster in dragon riding than you typically would be for normal flying, which I absolutely love the idea. And I love the idea that dragon riding is available day one, step one, first hour, first minute of dragon flight. This is amazing and I'm so excited that Blizzard have finally learnt uh, that we aren't interested in those long tedious rep grinds to unlock flying. We want them from day one. This is amazing and I'm so happy about it. Customizable dragon mounts. Guys, not only are we going to be able to fly in a unique, special, different way in Dragonflight, but we're also going to be able to customize our dragons that we are riding, which means that this is a whole new type of mount that we've never experienced before in the game. It's almost like a transmog or a barbershop, but for dragons, which is so cool. It basically means that not every single dragon you see across World of Warcraft are the same. This adds a unique flavor, I, I feel, in Dragonflight, that everyone has their own way of playing the game and their own things that they enjoy about the game. If you want to have a royal majestic looking dragon then you can do that you can customize it to be royal and majestic but if you want it to be a snubby ugly little drake that flies around and eats goblins all day then you can do that yes known customization for dragons include new colors snoots horns tails dragon armor and loads more. According to the World of Warcraft devs and what I've seen so far from all of the alpha footage, there is a 
huge amount of customization for your dragon riding mounts. I can't believe this, and it is such an exciting step forward within the development of World of Warcraft. And I think I speak for the entirety of World of Warcraft audience, players and gamers alike. We are very pleased with this change. So there are some general changes coming to Dragonflight as well with customization outside of dragons and just general customization across the board, which I think are important to talk about and are important to address. They will be renaming the traditional male and female to body type one and body type two. This will be taking away the aspect that you are forced to play as a male or forced to play as a female. And instead, it is changing it to generally body type one, body type two, and you can choose pretty much your own pronoun. This very much reflects the type of society that we are moving towards and generally just allows people to feel more comfortable about being themselves within the game without impacting anyone else in a negative way. At the end of the day, what's the problem with someone being able to choose what they want to play as? It is a fantasy game, and this is all about what they want to play as and be in World of Warcraft. I think having these extra options is a great thing for World of Warcraft on a whole. There are also a massive variety of changes coming to the Drakthia. So the Drakthia is the brand new race in World of Warcraft, and we will be able to play that when we get Dragonflight, and you'll be able to play it as an evoker, which is the class that is given to the race Drakthia. By the looks of it, there are basically two forms for the Drakthia. There's a humanoid form, and then there's a dragonoid form. And the dragonoid form, uh, there's great amounts of customization from what I've seen, horns, fins, everything like that. Even your armor, whilst in your dragon, uh, dragonoid form, is customizable, which I think is really, really cool, actually. Additionally, just looking at the customization of the humanoid form is absolutely bewildering. There is so much potential customization that you can do there that I really feel that it is opening World of Warcraft up to the future of what our characters will be able to look like. I'm already looking at the new customization options and thinking, what if this was like for every race in World of Warcraft? This is insane. I can't believe the potential customization changes coming in Dragonflight. This game is looking less like a cartoon and more like a really in-depth character creation, customization shenanigans. Just looking on Wowhead and looking at all the other content creators who are playing the Dragonfly Alpha and seeing all of those awesome customizations just shows there is almost too much to show for you in World of Warcraft. I think when we finally get our hands on that, there'll be some really interesting customization changes. And I actually might start modeling some of my characters after characters from my favorite movies and things like this. I think this could be really, really fun. Can you imagine making like, can you imagine having so much customization options in World of Warcraft that you can make your favorite character from on a Lord of the Rings? How amazing would that be? Imagine if you could even change your dragon to look like Smog from The Hobbit. That would be crazy too. I think I speak for everyone that we're all really happy about these awesome customization changes coming to the entirety of World of Warcraft not just the him, her, she, uh, and all that. We're also really happy about the, uh, the physical changes that we can see uh, with all of the potential races and classes of World of Warcraft. So thank you for that, Blizzard. Please make changes like this on a whole for every race, not just the Drakthir. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but there's a new race coming in Dragonflight. And with this new race, there can only be one class played, which is a little bit sad news. I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping to play as different classes for this race. But either way, you can't win them all. You can play as the Evoker, which is a brand new class for the Draxia race in World of Warcraft. This, this race was created by Naltharion. They wear male and they can use their dragon powers to either heal or do large amounts of damage to the enemies. Evokers have two specializations, obviously damage or healing, but these are actually called devastation, which is the damaging spec. Range DPS specialization, focusing on using attacks with explosive power from the red dragon flight or focusing on overwhelming power from the blue dragon flight. Initial impressions is that the red dragon flight damage is superior to the blue, but we will see as that continues to to be developed and tested in the alpha. Preservation is the healing specialization of the evokers, which 
prioritizes both the bronze and the green dragonflight abilities. The green dragonflight abilities allows them to nurture your allies, while the time magic of the bronze dragonflight allows you to rewind wounds to when they were healthy again. Overall, I think that we are all excited to get our greasy mitts on the evokers and the Dracthea of Dragonflight World of Warcraft. I know for a fact that I can't wait to start trying to heal as a green dragonflight evoker. I really can't wait. I think it's going to be such a fun, unique experience to jump across the map, heal my allies, then teleport back and then heal them some more. That is going to be so amazing. And I am filled with excitement. Are you not? Are you not excited? From the initial looks of Dragonflight World of Warcraft, the new areas look absolutely incredible. We're going to be talking about the areas of Dragonflight. These areas are all designed with dragon riding in mind, which basically means that they want you to explore the world. They want you to be able to pick up and jump off a ledge and be able to fly instantly and build up your momentum super quickly. They want to make it so the map is accessible to everyone. It's not an absolute mission that direction. It's designed to be accessible for everyone, which on a whole is a real big positive. That being said, I've also seen that the map looks bloody gorgeous. And I'm sorry if that's a light curse, but it is bloody gorgeous from what I've seen. As far as I've seen, there are only five zones in Dragonflight. However, they are very large and they are very diverse. You have the Waking Shores, which are the home of the Red and Black Dragonflight, a wild, untamed land rife with elemental magic. The Waking Shores is the first zone that we will enter in Dragonflight. We have Thaldrazus, which is the seat of power on Dragonflight. For all of the dragon aspects, it is almost the shining beacon of the Dragonflight kingdom. Thaldrazus offers brilliant, beautiful, pristine buildings, which keeps in mind all of the various different Dragonflights in World of Warcraft. The On Arin Plains are a verdant grassland zone in Dragonflight. It is the second zone of Dragonflight that we'll be entering, and it inhabits the Green Dragonflight. The region is actually named after an old god, the eagle wild god Onahara, and the zone is mostly made up of two things, plains and groves. This area on a whole is largely underdeveloped and has just been left for itself for like over 10,000 years. The azure span, obviously the home of the blue dragonflight. It's covered in ice, snowy peaks, mist covered forests, and icy tundras. The regal blue prow dragonflight aspects once roamed these lands, but with the passage of time, the Tusker, the Knolls, and the Furballs now call these ancient lands their home. And the little zone at the top of the map, the Forbidden Reach, is actually where the Drakthea start off, and that is their starting zone just there. They're not too far from the rest of the map, but just far enough. These zones on a whole all look absolutely gorgeous. And it actually looks to me personally, the first thing I thought about when I saw these zones was how much they reminded me of Wrath of the Lich King zones, like Northrend. It was almost too similar, almost. They, they, it, it's like they took the most positive things from that expansion in terms of the zones and they re it into the new expansion, which I absolutely love because there are some actually gorgeous zones that really remind me a lot of like grizzly hills and the very like icy zones, which I, I absolutely love. And hey, I'm very happy to see the Tusker again. Six, dragon racing. Dragon racing, as you might expect, is centered around flying your dragon over an obstacle course or through an obstacle course in as fast a time as possible. This is very much solo or multiplayer content, depending on how you want to play it. And these obstacle courses on a whole can be found throughout the various zones in Dragonflight. They offer multiple difficulties, making it easier or harder, depending on if you're after a challenge or not. You can get bronze, silver, or even gold achievements, depending on how you perform in these challenges. Now, it's worth noting to go faster as a dragon rider, there are a certain abilities that you need to keep in mind for your dragon riding, such as Vigor. Those are the blue diamonds on screen that you see as people are flying around using dragon riding. Initially, there are only three, but it looks like we could be getting more throughout the expansion of Dragonflight. Vigor recharges. Vigor allows you to use abilities whilst dragon riding, and this recharges quite quickly 
as you are flying at high speeds or additionally if you're on the ground as well, meaning that you don't have a lot of downtime in between flying sessions. Your two abilities initially are one that sends you upwards and one that sends you forwards. These two abilities to, can just launch you basically in the direction that you're trying to go. Now, obviously, this is brand new tech for World of Warcraft Blizzard. So please, on a whole, do what I'm doing and just take it easy on them. Give them constructive feedback, but certainly don't shoot them down and say, I don't like this, and then just scream and shout about it. Try your best to give constructive criticism based off what you are seeing, because on a whole, these types of changes are really magical and are taking World of Warcraft in a new direction that is super positive to see. I know on a whole, as World of Warcraft players, we can be very passionate. So I suggest that we try our best to use that passion to try and make these systems that much better for Blizzard and for ourselves. These courses are super exciting. And I know for one, and I know for myself that I can't wait to start challenging all of my guildies and my friends to races throughout Dragonflight. It seems that Blizzard have changed the way that bags work in World of Warcraft. This is really exciting to see. So it's almost like they've just taken the best bits from the add-ons that we've had in World of Warcraft for years and years, and they basically just implemented it into the game as a base feature, which is really cool. So effectively, we'll be able to have all of our bags combined into one bag if we so choose. Additionally, if you don't like that, you can still have your uh, your individual bags as well. This is all going to be involved in the new UI uh, changes coming to World of Warcraft, and more about that later. So you've now got your base bag, four bags, and then you've got a region bag as well. The new bags in World of Warcraft are 32 slot general bag and also a slightly more rare 34 slot general bag, which is craftable with tailoring. Additionally, we have new reagent bags, which are 36 slots. This is going to be super useful for just consolidating your materials and not having really cluttery bags that you can't really see uh, anything in your bags. It's super annoying when that happens. So uh, I know I'm really happy about this change. It's also really nice to see that Blizzard are trying their hardest to make the game more playable for the new players uh, without having to get tons and millions of all these add-ons. I know for one, I get sick of managing my add-ons sometimes. So it's really nice Blizzard are trying to keep that in mind with making the game more consolidated for the average player. Keep these changes coming, Blizz, because we like having clean bags. Blizzard have changed the way that the UI is working, just like they did with the bags. They've also included a new way of editing the UI in World of Warcraft. So now you will very simply just be able to go into system and click edit, and then you can edit the way that your UI looks in World of Warcraft. How cool is that? I've got to say that the base UI looks very much like Bartender 4 did. So you'll be effectively able to change your key binding just literally by hovering over the button you want to change and then pressing the button you want that key bind to be. Additionally, you'll be able to edit the way that the actual bars look. You'll be able to edit where you want to have the bars all over the map. You want it down here. You want it down there. You want it everywhere. You can do that. Additionally, they've also consolidated their World of Warcraft Blizzard design for their bars. So if you want to have that, you can, or additionally, you can just turn it off. To this day, I don't know anyone who doesn't play with add-ons in World of Warcraft. Everyone I know plays with add-ons, and I think that's kind of a shame. I think that World of Warcraft should be a game which is playable without add-ons, but the add-ons just add to it if you want it, but is definitely playable without. I actually couldn't imagine playing in raiding at any high tier at all or PvP or anything like that without the use of add-ons. So having a really base UI add-ons like this is definitely taking us in the right direction for making the game more accessible for a wider audience. It's never an easy sell to say to someone, hey, come play World of Warcraft. Oh, but you might need 50 add-ons to make it playable. Come on, you know, you know what I'm saying there, guys. But this is really positive and definitely a step in the right direction, Blizzard. Really happy to, uh, to have almost a, a Blizzard Bartender 4 built in. For anyone living under a rock or trying to avoid too many changes, uh, being shown, there is a huge amount of changes coming to crafting in World of Warcraft. Just to briefly summarize some of the changes coming Dragonflight for crafting, crafting orders are something that is being introduced in World of Warcraft. This is a way for a player to, to basically request an item to be crafted by someone who has that profession for you. So effectively, this means that you could even get soulbound gear from, say, a tailorer, even though you aren't a tailorer. This basically means that on a whole, you'll be able to access 
various different items in the game without having go to go through the huge grind of getting it itself. You can actually pay for a crafter to craft the item for you using crafting orders. This will basically mean that players who like to fantasize about just being a crafter in World of Warcraft, oh, I like crafting. Oh, I like crafting. Ah, oh, I like crafting. If you like to do that, then you can just rely on these work orders to make your gold and be, I like crafting. <laughs> crafting tables will now be added to the main hub of Valdraken. New profession gear, profession gear, is going to be added into the game that will not take up valuable infantry space and will actually be always equipable. This will give you a unique feeling for being whatever profession you are and will actually make you look like you use that profession as well i.e if you're a miner you might have a pickaxe or a big backpack or something along those lines if you're a jewelry crafter you might have like a monocle where you can see if that's a true diamond or not. that's not a true diamond what you know that type of stuff quality is a new attribute that is being dropped into dragonflight for both crafted items and gathered reagents. If you craft items of a higher quality, the piece of gear will be better. For example, if you craft a piece of gear, it will have a higher item level, or if you craft a potion, it will have a more powerful effect depending on the quality of that potion or piece of gear. The crafting UI has been changed to specifically allow, allow you to add certain stats to your gear to make it more customizable for your profession. You can learn new specializations for your professions. For example, you can make, and you can learn these in multiple different ways. For example, you can find an old book uh, on a bookshelf in some ruins and learn something really, really rare. Or you can potentially even meet like a hermit in a cave somewhere. All right, I'm Hermit Jim. I can teach you all of my special ways. And this will make you more valuable to your guild and potential friends for crafting if you know those super unique special recipes. Now, these crafting tables that have been introduced into Valdraken is going to be a unique place for people to meet up and craft together, which basically just gives you a bit more of a social experience as a crafter using professions in World of Warcraft. It's kind of nice being able to see all of the other uh, main profession guys in a city. I think that's a really good little thing that they've added in. It's dependent, though, if it's going to be a requirement or not. In New Worlds, I know from playing New World that it was a requirement to have crafting stations, and it was actually really, really fun. Every time you went to a town, the, the stations were always super busy, and you could meet up with other people who also needed to do their crafting, and you always felt like you were just gathering materials, and then you'd be saving them up for when you get back to town, you can start doing your crafting. And that was always a nice thing where you can meet other people in that regard. So on a whole, I'm really positive about those crafting stations. And I think it will just add a more social aspect to the game rather than it being everyone for themselves and everyone's just crafting all over the world and just let they're stood in a den of monsters and they're just like, I'm just going to make some cloth right now. <laughs> Overall, I'm really positive about these changes coming to uh, the professions in Dragonflight. And I think once we've all kind of got used to and I think once we've all got used to these changes, we'll be all better off in the long run and we'll be a lot happier with how the professions work in World of Warcraft. So great changes here, Blizz. I'm really, really happy about that. For anyone that doesn't know, we're getting some new changes to the way that talent trees work in Dragonflight. They're basically rehauling the entire system and making it more customizable, a bit like it was back in the original World of Warcraft when I first started playing when I was a young. 12 year old boy back in the day of World of Warcraft. Good time. Good times, man. What I really loved about those times back then was how customizable the talent trees could be with regard to if you were playing as a rogue, you could play more of a hardy, vicious rogue that could take a bit of a beating, but could also stun enemies and just keep them stunned for ages. Not necessarily do as much damage as some other rogues but you could really just change the way that your playstyle was orientated depending on your team, which I really, really liked. And I think that with these changes coming to the game, we're going to be able to find that the game is, is far more enjoyable for the average player who just wants to build their character for whatever form of content they're doing. So if they're playing PvP, maybe they want to go for a more survival aspect uh, of how they're playing, how they're building their talents. Maybe they want to have greater access to cooldowns and survival cooldowns. Maybe they just want to be a blaster. Maybe they're in PvE 
and they just want to nuke their target into dust. And these new talent trees give them that option to just be a pumper, which I really, really like and I think is, is really fun. On a whole, first thoughts upon looking at them, some look better than others. I, I don't know if you guys have seen the rogue talent trees versus some of the other talent trees. And it's got to be said there that some of the talent trees are definitely more meaty than others are. And I'm not sure if this is just because the classes haven't necessarily had as much development as, say, the rogue. But on a whole, I think that uh, they could do with probably a little bit more work, a little bit more customization for those various classes, even if they have to go back to the drawing board and just develop some different talents, choices and things of that nature. On a whole, I'm very excited about this change. And I think we as all the players in World of Warcraft will be very excited for these changes. They'll be able to change things depending on what they're doing and how they like to play World of Warcraft on a whole. So very, very good stuff, Blizz, and thank you so much for these changes. I think I'm speaking for the entirety of World of Warcraft players when I say we definitely wanted more customization. Something that we've really lacked in World of Warcraft is uh, vertical progression as you level from level 1 all the way up to level 60, and now I guess 70? Uh, has always been as you level up there isn't always a power increase there isn't always something new but with these new talents and these new talent points that you use i think that there's always going to be a slight power spike with every brand new level in world of warcraft and i for one am very excited about leveling with these new talent trees i think it's going to change the way leveling feels on a whole so thank you for that and i hope you guys really like these talent tree changes and there we have it the changes coming to world of warcraft dragonflight i am so excited and i know you guys are as well if you have any additional changes that i missed in this video or things that you know you want to add on to what i was saying then please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you'd like to support me in continuing to make awesome content just like this, then please feel free to check out my Patreon where you can support me directly. But thank you as always for everyone who has watched this video. Like, hit the like button and left us a comment below. This is Rosie Mao and I'll see you next time.